All right, we are live. Welcome to Rule Zero, Rich Cooper Entrepreneurs Edition today, uh, the only decentralized show that moves around for the cool dudes. Um, I'm going to be joined by a few others as the show kind of rolls on through the day as we normally do, but we've got uh, Rolo, John, Troy, and uh, Myron on from the Fresh and Fit podcast. Okay. Um, if you guys are watching this anywhere else on the YouTubes, do me a solid. I'm just going to drop the link to come on over to YouTube. It helps me out with the algorithm. So if you're on Facebook, Twitter, whatever, click that. Come and join us over there and smash the like button before we get started. Um, show today is maintaining desire in her over a long-term relationship or a marriage. Um, also known as frame. I think because Rolo has basically written the rules, the iron rules anyway, we should probably start with uh, why frame is important because I think that's iron rule number one, is it? Yeah, it is. Um, this is a this is a topic that I am probably asked about the most because everybody is either confused about what frame is or else they they know what it is and then they have no idea like how to, like how do I hold frame? Or they'll, um, they'll get into a position where they think that they had frame like prior to um prior to getting in a a relationship or getting married or whatever and then suddenly they backslide right? they, they go from being like sort of in control of the relationship or like having hand right remember that um they they think that that's the that's the whole thing it's like i just got to be dominant and just be you know and and insist upon my way and that that makes it frame it's not really so much that um when I came up with iron rule number one, which is, you know, frame is everything, as you just saw, um, it was based on uh, psychological and sociological principles. I didn't come up with that. It's actually something that I was studying back in the day when I was at university. And frame is, is uh, we're, we're kind of like in each other's frame right now, right? Because if you're the host of the show, like everybody that's on this show, Rich, we're all in your frame at this point. Right. Because yeah. you get to decide like who you're going to go to, who you're going to talk to, who's, who you're going to give time to, that kind of stuff. So like if you're watching like a, a talk show or you're watching somebody's your favorite podcast or whatever, um, you're going to you're going to be in that person's frame. Like for instance, I'm going to be on with uh, with Myron uh, next week uh, Tuesday, <laughs> and I will be in Myron's frame, right? Because it's his show. That's an easy example of that. And so when I talk about frame, it's not always about like, oh, you got to be in frame with your with your wife or your girlfriend or whatever, or the girl that you're with, which of course you do, but you, it's it's understanding and sort of like by order of degrees, understanding whose frame that you're in. So if you're working for somebody, like you you go and work for your boss for like eight hours, 10 hours a day, whatever it is, you're in your boss or your supervisor's frame because they're telling you, this is what we have to go do and this is what we have to get done and these are the projects we're working on and this is what I expect from you and blah, 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 blah. So if you're a kid, like I also use this example in the uh, in that post, is if you have children, children instinctively understand frame because they're dependent upon their their parents. So if there's you know mommy and daddy or whatever, I mean later on when kids get into like puberty and they start you know turning into teenagers, then they start to challenge like that frame to see like are you really are you really all of it or are you not? And so there's that that understanding. It's like an innate understanding of frame, and this is something that just human beings understand and. Even higher order mammals really kind of get to if there's a dominant uh, like leader of a particular troop or a, a pack of wolves or whatever it is, there's always that they're in within the frame of whoever the most dominant personality is in that particular group. So it's not just about like, you know, I'm going to be if you know, whose frame are we in? That's what we talk about in the sphere, in the in the mass sphere. But when it comes to frame, it's not just uh, it's not just about like men and women. It can be lots of different contexts. Team captain of a sport. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah, definitely. You know, like, who's the guy you want everybody else to kind of model right. themselves after? Mm, right. Mm, right. Yeah. Did yeah. Um, frame come into effect when you were fighting, John? I mean, like, was there a frame of the fight? Absolutely. Somebody like, on top or the bottom. You can tell the there are fights that are there are fights that are lost and won at the, the stare down. Mm -hmm. Guys lose their frame there. They they you know they realize that this is a real fight. This guy's bigger than whatever. Their fear takes over. You see it in their eyes. You see you lost a frame there. You know you've won the fight when they kind of back up in that in that instance. You know so <clears throat> frame is important. Uh, frame is also I refer to a little bit with fighting would be momentum hmm. because you, you know you maintain that momentum through the course of the fight until you finish or the fight ends. But um, but that's that's your frame. If you get soft on your frame and you cut back or you hold back on the momentum, you let that momentum stop. It's easy for your opponent to, to overtake things and run away with it. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. It comes into business as well, actually, a little bit, because there's a great book that I read a few years ago called Pitch Anything by Oren Claff. And it is a sales business book, basically. But in that, he talks about, and it's a really, really great description, actually, of owning the frame in commercial situations. And he says, when you're responding ineffectively to things the other person is saying and doing, that person owns the frame and you're being frame controlled. If you have to explain your authority, power, position, leverage, and advantage, you do not hold the stronger frame. So he talks about when you go to a sales presentation, how can you subtly take the frame from the, so rather than you, sort of kowtowing to the people that are making the financial decision. It's like, how can I take that frame back and bring them into my frame instead? So it's really good stuff. Ryan, I want to ask you, because I'm almost done listening to your audio book, which is excellent, by the way. If you guys don't have fuck files, get it. Um, I mean, you talk about frame a few times in that book. Um, can you kind of dive into a little bit from what your perception is? Frame is how you frame things. I think that's the easiest way to put it. <laughs> For example, Every situation you're in, you can frame it however you want. I could frame, uh, oh, I don't want to mention the Stedman thing, but I was just like, your wife's <laughs> cheating on you. You can frame it as in the, how could she do this to me? How could she do this to me? Or you can frame it as in like, this person's no longer valuable in my life and I'm going to go do something about fixing my situation in life. You can frame being zeroed out as in, this is the worst thing ever and then just go put a bullet in your mouth. Or you can frame it as in, You've just got a reset button on your life. And now how do you build yourself up to be like reinvent yourself into something that's more positive? And I think mm. frame frame is not so much your ability to withstand what the world does to you. Frame is your ability to find your path and navigate. Because red pill is essentially that, isn't mm. it? Navigating your way through life. It's not about fixing things. Mm. And so if you don't have frame, you're not navigating things because you aren't framing your life other people are framing it for you you're they're living you're living for other people's desires or narratives yeah and it never works out because nobody has your best interest at heart except for you right like i say you wipe your own ass every day without complaint maybe treat that guy like he's worth something <laughs> <laughs> well, by the way speaking of awesome books i just want to say i've given center frame in my thing the best book i've read in a long time here and i put him next to his his equally good brothers don't worry, John. I'm getting yours in there now. Apparently, you had a book written. I didn't even know the two. <laughs> We're getting there, though. On the next ones. Um, Myron, I want you to chime in. I know you're muted. Do you have, do you have a minute to talk can about you guys, frame? You yeah, you're good. Okay. Yeah, no. I mean, so frame is basically, to, to me, it's it's who's con dictating how the situation is going to unfold. You know what I mean? The Typically, uh, so, for example, right now, the FBI agents are controlling the frame and Pat Stedman is in their frame. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're asking him the questions and everything all like, like that. So, basically, whoever um, controls the scenario, like an interview situation is like a good one, right? Whoever's like asking a question typically is the one that's in the frame. I, I would say that's a generic way to, to say it. But, like, when it comes to, like, men and women, whoever's the one, like, that's calling the shots, that's leading, you know? So, like, when I go on a date with a girl, I tell guys all the time, when, when you're on a date with a woman, you have to control everything. And yes. You have to pay for the date. You got to tell her where you're going to go. You got to tell her to meet you, everything like that. And the reason why that's so important is because you're setting it up where logistically speaking, you're setting yourself up to get sex on the first date. And the only way that you're going to be able to get sex on the first date is by running the frame from the rip. Like as soon as she shows up, hey, we're going to go here. We're going to go there. Move her to different locations. Don't tell her what you're going to do. Um, kind of have that excitement going. And then you also escalate while you're doing it simultaneously so that pretty much everything is in your hands. And I always say, Basically, if you, your frame is correct, it should be a foregone conclusion when you tell her, hey, listen, get up. We're going to actually going to go get a drink at this next spot. Boom. She's going to follow you because you've paid for it. You've dictated how things are going to go. You just put your credit card down. You're confident about it. So she's not going to sit there and question your authority and question, uh, you know, your frame. But if you're like unsure of what you're doing on a date, uh, 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 stuttering when you speak, when the check comes, you're looking at it like this, analyzing it. Uh, you don't really have a plan. Hey, what, what, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? You're deferring to her authority. She's going to be less apt to want to follow you when you say, hey, let's do that. So your frame is weaker. So ironclad frame is when you tell her to do something, it's zero resistance. It's like she already knows, okay, yeah, I'm following you no matter what. So, uh, and, the more and, and the more confidence you have, the easier it's going to be to dictate that frame. I think the thing, the difference with something like frame in, in male female relations, as opposed to something like a police situation where you've been arrested, is that in the latter case, it's they've got the whole cathedral of power around them, haven't they? And they've also got the implicit threat of, of, of violence or force as well. But so, yeah, but so, certainly, they've got they, you know, they they because because of you know the the law and because of the way that, that you know uh, the authorities are constituted, they have very real 
power in that situation. Whereas in a social situation with a woman, particularly if you go into it right, you very much have the the ability to to control that frame from the beginning. And that's why we study it so much in this space, because that is something that you can do. Um, it gets more difficult when you get down the line if you if you haven't done it correctly at the beginning and you're stuck in a bad pattern, which often happens. Is it, I'm, I'm is it possible to, to to like set the tone? Like, are there certain things that guys can do to set the tone to lead the frame in a relationship? I was gonna say that just with uh, opening on dating apps, you can mm -hmm. set the frame with that. If you open up too nice, they're going to put you in that you know friend zone resource category. Right. You got to come at them. You know, you can't be vulgar, or whatever. But I, I come straight at them with like. I'm into kink stuff. I'm looking for dates that are into kink stuff. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm here for you know. There's sex is number one thing I'm talking about right off the gate. It, yes. it doesn't have to be completely about that. You know, I don't go into details. I like kink stuff. So are you interested? And if they if they are like a conversation proceeds from there, but I've already set the pace that hey, this is a sexual relationship we're talking about right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And actually, I'd That's say it's really important. It. It's really important to do that in the early stages of a dating sexual relationship i think a lot of guys don't give themselves permission to be in control of the frame in the first place yeah. and this is as a result i think of the acculturation and the socialization and whatever like uh, of the last like three or four generations of of guys is they are not expecting to be in control of the frame they they believe in this egalitarian equalist ideal and that we're all going to be even steven and so uh just like uh, it, it goes it like permeates everything all of our relationships when it comes to uh well i mean other people too but like certainly when it comes to uh intersexual dynamics uh just like what myron was saying just a second ago it's like you're on a date or something like that and now you've gone from okay we're going to go to this restaurant we're going to go do this we're going to like you have a you have a plan you have some some sort of direction you have some sort of goal you have some sort of like okay this is what we're going to do on this date i'm in control i'm i'm going to drive the car kind of thing and then what happens is when you go from that to uh, i don't know what do you want to do i don't know what do you want to do then suddenly now you've lost the frame because you are deferring to her authority as far as like what it is that you want to do and where you want to go and so now not only have you sort of maybe willingly or voluntarily like you know surrendered the frame to the whole thing um you've gone from being in control and in as a command presence as like troy was saying just a second ago you've gone from being a command presence to being like oh okay let's play this whole even and what happens is when you do something like that you go from being this guy who's competent and this guy who is dominant and competent enough to like have a plan and do all these things and giving off this vibe of, okay, this guy's alpha. And I, I say that in abstract terms um, to being sort of like, you don't know what you're doing. You become incompetent all of a sudden. And what that does is it triggers in a woman. It triggers the idea that, oh my God, this guy, I, he almost tricked me. He almost fooled me. I thought he was alpha all this time. And now he's deferring to my authority. Now he's deferring to me. Now, now we're suddenly he's gone from being in command and having frame to giving it up willingly. It's not like she tried to test him and take it from him. It's the guy just didn't give himself permission to stay and maintain it and stay in control of that. Now that's in a dating sense. That's not in a long-term sense. So when you've got a, a, a woman who believes that you are, in control and she goes you know she wants to live in the world that you're creating that's really what the early puas used to say it was like frame was the world into which that woman wants to be a part of like she willingly comes and voluntarily comes and lives within your world in your frame and now suddenly you're going well you know sorry it was all bullshit. uh it was all me just kind of faking this the whole time and now we're going to play even steven and now it's 50 50 and i want to know what you want to do and let's you know your needs are important and this is and this and this and this this and this you know let's have open communication all this other stuff instead of this being my frame and this being my world what happens is that triggers her sort of existential fear that says this guy really doesn't know what he's doing and oh my god i'm invested in this guy how am i going to extricate myself from this situation mm. and i want to just want to um oh, go ahead, ahead myron i'll i'll oh, you know, hop in after say, you um because rollo brought up a really good point there maintaining frame inequality cannot coexist you know, mm -hmm. and, and quite frankly, a lot of women b believe in this BS ideology that, you know, men and women are equal, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I get it all the time on my TikTok, like, you're a misogynist, oh, man, we can, don't you want an equal partnership? And I'm here to tell you, dumb broads, like, no, 
Not at all. Because at the end of the day, men lead, women follow, and women, I always say, women are inca fundamentally incapable of leading men within any confinement of a relationship. So in order for the relationship to work, there's got to be one person running it. You know, nothing gets done by committee. There's a reason why we have a president of the United States. There's a prime minister, whatever. When there's a committee, it makes things a lot more difficult to come to a solid decision quickly. So um, maintaining frame and equality can't coexist. Let me just um, chime in here because I wanted to talk about this, um, you know, as the early steps, because I also want to also catch up with these super chats and I want to move into more like long term relationship frame. But mm. a really good way to kind of check this from the get go is when you're setting up a date with a chick, you're always going to meet somewhere. Right. Conventionally. I mean, there's some places that are still in lockdown, but let's say conventionally you're going to get through a meet, you know, for a coffee, a drink, a meal, whatever. It should always be a coffee or drink, you know, for the first one, you know, from the get go, by the way. But you've got to travel. She's at point A. You're at point B. Are you going to go to point A? Is she going to come to point B? Are you going to meet in the middle? The thing with that is I've seen women drive three hours on a first date and come right to my front door. I've also conventionally had women say, well, no, uh, I don't have a car and I live all the way downtown. So I need you to come to this place that's at the bottom of my building. If I'm going to drive all the way downtown from the Toronto suburbs to go to her front door, I'm in her frame. If she can't get on an Uber or find a way to meet me somewhere that I, that I pinpoint, then she's not cooperating and that's ideally going to be a waste of my time. And that's not an indicator of genuine burning desire. If you're going to get engaged in anything on any kind of basis, it's always my opinion that you want genuine burning desire from her if you want her best. And a real good test of that frame is to make sure that she's going to come somewhere in the middle at the very least, if not right to your front door would be ideal. That's a very, very good indicator of holding the frame in that dynamic. Let me just grab these super chats real quick before we keep moving on here. Tom. That, those are great. Um, by the way, thanks, man. Uh, Tom will come come from far, far away if they really want to be with. Oh you. yeah, yeah. And if she's not interested in you, she's going to make you drive to her front door because she's got mm -hmm. nothing better going on that night, right? <clears throat> uh, Tom Bombadil says good morning. Uh, Don says when's Rolla coming to Miami? Um, Myron, <laughs> do you want to chime in on that? Uh, he's going to be here on Monday, and then we'll do the show. We're debating whether we're going to do it on Tuesday or Wednesday, but I'm thinking Tuesday we'll do the show. Rolla, we're going to talk about his book. Uh, and then we'll have him and Hotep on on Wednesday. So. Cool. Nice. That'll be fun to watch. And we got another one here from Tom. $50 super chat. We are done mincing words. Christians will win the coming conflict, the battle of good versus evil. It's not even close. Choose this day who you will serve. Step out and be counted, good or evil, God or Satan. Thanks, Tom. Last time somebody said that shit, he ended up on a fucking rap sheet. Just saying. You uh, lose! Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's good to have these feelings but a lot of this just turns out to be guys sitting on their butt hoping and praying that something will happen somebody's going to do something somebody else is going to do something here's a here's a very good example of, of frame right like i've had a girl drive two hours to come see me brought me breakfast too right like that's that's mm -hmm. that's one she's got genuine burning desire for you and if you don't know what that is read my book and two she's obviously in your frame no well. I mean, women break rules for alphas and they make rules for betas. That's the, if you want to know whether or not you have frame, like, do I have frame? I, I get this all the time. Some guys like emailing me stuff like I lost frame. I did this. I did that. And, and now I have to do these things or I have to jump through these hoops or whatever else. It's like, if she is making rules for you, I don't know how, how much more simple I can put this. If she's making rules, she does not see so you're not in her frame. If you are obeying those rules, if you're going, okay, we're going to spoon on the couch for, you know, for, for, uh, you know, two hours before we even move on to doing anything else. If she's the one that is giving you the rules and saying, well, you know, and then, you know, we're, it's, it's the third date, fourth date, fifth date, eighth date, 10th date, whatever it is, you know, I, I just don't feel comfortable with you, blah, 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 blah. She's making rules for you. Ask yourself the very simple question. Am I jumping through hoops? Am I obeying rules? Is she making rules? And am I following them? Or is she breaking rules? Is she changing religions? Is she, you know, blowing off her friends because she is that into me? Is that's because just like what you were saying before, like Rachel, of course, you know, you can't negotiate a genuine desire. Uh, John, you were just saying a minute ago, it's like if if she is into you, if she's a ride or die girl, if she has genuine desire for you, she will break rules to get with you. I that, had 
that's how you definitely that's i mean because women want that that alpha male right they want that dominance in there and like i was saying before with uh i've said this before with uh with donovan is that if a woman is into you she will suddenly find things to be to have in common with you she will she will grow her hair long she'll change her style she'll take on an iud she'll even tattoo her name on your body if she's that much into you if she's in your i had i had a girl first date she drove five hours to meet me in uh san luis obispo for the weekend Hmm. Hmm. great for greatest first date ever (laughs) great first date ever words words from an mma champ right um Let's let's talk. Oh, hang on a second before we keep talking, guys. I'm I'm looking at the watch count and the likes. We've only got 276 likes. <laughs> We've got over a thousand people watching. It, it hit, takes nothing uh, to hit the like I, button, and it helps. We get a thousand algorithms. and one likes. I will storm. Where the FBI is watching. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't make promises on social media. <laughs> a thousand and one <laughs> likes, and Ryan will storm the FBI. <laughs> Ryan, you're in Canada. <laughs> He's going to grab his canoe with the 50 cal mounted on the front and portage it once he get once he gets across Lake Ontario and storm the capital. I already have my bull ha- antlers on <laughs> order right now from Amazon. Your uh, water awesome buffalo. Right up there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for smashing the like button. Um, so let's talk about it more on a long term basis. So frame in a longer term relationship or like is 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 frame in a long term relationship or a marriage the same thing? I think so. I, I my divorce because I lost frame. Really? I, I'm, I'm clearly here because I, talk about I, that. I got uh, sucked into the happy wife, happy life mantra. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where I, kept, I kept giving up more and more of myself and who I was and what my frame was because I needed to do this for the children. I needed to do this for the wife. I needed to make sure that she was happy because if she's not happy, nobody's happy. And then, you know, after a while of, you know, several years of that, you start to realize that this, you know, it's going downhill. She's not putting in any effort. I'm putting in all this effort. And I was just like, fuck it. I'm not putting in any effort anymore. And that's really when the, uh, the relationship started to end when, when I decided that I wasn't going to, carry the load by myself anymore Mm. Mm. is there any difference between that and a long-term relationship though because i haven't been married so i couldn't speak to the marriage side of things but i would imagine if you're cohabiting it's pretty much it's kind of pretty much equivalent right (laughs) i mean i would uh you want to start a fight with married red pill guys mention that (laughs) They hold on to that like the circumcision arguments. Oh, <laughs> apologies. Oh, right. because, because, right. once you're, because once you're married, you're really locked in. It's it's, it's down on paper. It's, it's well, yeah. yeah. Your margin for error is a whole lot different than if you're having the girlfriend you walk so, away. So, so the necessity to so then in that that being the case, then you get the situation where the girl um, makes you jump through, or the woman makes you jump through even bigger hoops because she's aware that she now has that additional leverage. Yeah. Have you, have you ever read the uh, Sixteen Commandments of Poon by Royce? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, if you're in the sphere, there, at some point you came across that. There's a, I forget which one it was. Actually, all of them are really a good example of holding frame or yeah. how to hold frame. That whole, all 16, how to hold frame. Uh, but there's one where, and this sort of speaks to what John was saying, is there, I forget which one it was, but uh, the key to uh, a successful, good, mature relationship is polarity. It's not. It's not similarity. It's not, uh, we're compatible. Let's find things that we can do. We're both into, you know, needle points, what, whatever it is that you're like, you, you think that you need to have some sort of, uh, some kind of identifying thing. It's not really that. It's, it's the differences that attract. It's not the likes that attract. And I think that's really tough for a lot of guys to get their heads around because we're taught from a very early age that the more alike we are with women, the more women are going to like us, right? We're supposed to identify with women. We're supposed to uh, get in touch with our emotions and get in touch with our feminine side. And the more we're like that, then the more women will, will like us. And the more we will understand what it is that it takes to make a woman happy. And what that does is that puts you into, first of all, it puts you into a transactional nature within your relationship with that woman. But it also puts you into a position of always trying to catch up because she has the pussy, right? She has the vagina. And so therefore, if she, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. You're on eggshells all the time. Exactly. Mm-hmm. How, do I, how do I handle this right so I get sex later? Mm-hmm. Let me ask yeah. you this question, John, because I mean, like you found in your marriage that you lost your frame. Did it, did it get to the point for you where you felt like you were going to spend like if you stayed married to her that you'd spend the rest of your life trying to make a miserable person on like an unhappy miserable person happy 
Um, man, I kind of just, uh, just took on the things that I needed to, to get things. So a lot of it was like, she was, she was protesting the fact that I was like, okay, you, you, I don't want you to get a corporate job until the kids are in school. So she, I, you know, we had two kids, so she had to wait five years to get a corporate job. Well, she was protesting that because all of her friends had corporate jobs and she didn't get to do what her friends were doing. And that became an issue. She wanted to get a job just to pay for daycare. And I was like, I, I'm only gone out of the house, you know, three hours a day. I only need the kids watched three hours a day. You can get a part-time job and just make sure that you don't do it while I, I need that three hours to train. And, um, you know, it was just it was just a headache, back and forth uh, battle all the time, and I ended up just saying fuck it and doing it all myself. So I just mm -hmm. took the whole load on on myself. So I would take the kids to training with me, and I would take I would do all this stuff just to uh, make sure that they were not sitting in front of the TV all day. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just I was like screw it, whatever, and I just I didn't uh, think too much about it. And I think it's probably why the, the divorce <laughs> happened is because I was just like over trying to make her happy. Yeah, mm -hmm. that can get exhausting. We had a superhero from GL. Uh, how do you deal with the urge of getting with other women than your LTR? Eat more soy. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have an LTR if you don't want one? As long as you have testosterone, you're always going to be attracted to other women. Rolo, well, you've been married forever. Do you still look at other women and say to your, and your head, head. Head. oh yeah, I'd wear that out as a hat? <laughs> I um, well, let's see. First off, uh, you get it out of your system. First of all, that's the first thing. I, I, you've asked me this before, uh, Rich, when you were saying like, how do? Remember when we did those shows, Rich, about like how do you vet for like a, a yeah. good long term relationship? And I, the first thing I told you is like most guys don't vet, myself included, right? When I was getting with my wife, my first question wasn't like oh i think i'm gonna settle down with this little girl like you know it wasn't like well she'll be a good mother to my children my first question of myself was can i be faithful to this person because i know me i've seen me do it <laughs> and i i and the answer was yes at that time and still is to this day you know 20 almost 25 years later um so I think that the 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 way that you deal with stuff like this is you have to put yourself into the frame of mind that this is what you are as a guy, right? When I was writing a, a book number four, uh, I go into the, uh, there's a, a section in that book where I talk about like, why is it that so many guys, particularly religious guys, uh, claim to be addicted to pornography? Like 68% of like Christian guys are quote unquote addicted to porn. And uh, and, and they self-admit this. And I'm like, well, why, why would that be? And it's the same reason why when women... Um, are promiscuous when when women uh, have uh, multiple partners prior to you know getting into a relationship they tend to have less you know they're on um, they're less happy um, they they tend to have a higher incidence of divorce uh, all the things that go along with uh, body count for women uh, that we can see statistically that they want to you know go into denial about it's the same thing it's like knowing what what's out there right it's like you got these guys that you're going to convince and say well there's only one person for you and you this is the only person you're going to be with for the rest of your life and if you feel any like urges to go and have sex with somebody else or if you get addicted to pornography or whatever you want to know why they're addicted to pornography it's because it's a virtual satisfaction of what their innate um, mating strategy really is which is unlimited access to unlimited sexuality <laughs> understand that about yourself that i think that's the pro that's the biggest problem right there's most guys they beat themselves up for like wanting to get with the hot little girl or the secretary or whatever it is that they're they're with after they've already made their decision i think what most guys need to do is they need to go out experience women explore their options uh spin more plates do not commit to anything until you're you know understand that when you get to like 35 36 years old you're going to be in a much better position to be sexually selective than you you were at any other time in your life realize that and i think knowing is half the battle really it's knowing a uh, human nature knowing your own nature and then you know experiencing women you know i'm not saying like you have to go and have like a 40 or 100 notch count i'm just saying that you have to have had prior experience before you get into that because most guys they'll get into it and they'll say man i i i decided too soon i i made a, a early decision it was a bad decision and they don't realize you know they want to participate in this they want to have sex they want to be more you know engaged with women as it is and I think really understanding that about yourself is the is the key to 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 you know getting past this 
urge is you're always going to have that urge understand having abundance rollo like the first time you remember do you guys remember the first time that you turned down sex because you wanted to have a nap or read a book or something like mundane like that (laughs) doesn't happen very often but okay yeah but you know what i mean (laughs) to the point where it's no longer the singular driving force between everything and then when i see this how do you get the urge to deal with other women with your ltr if you're at a point where you're willing to turn down sex because something you want is more valuable to you then yeah you're right. Rolo's absolutely right. You can make these decisions where, yeah, I can see other chicks as hot. I don't feel like fucking her if I'm going to settle down with this mm. one. To but be fair, that might take quite a when, Yeah, and you, when you have no scarcity, it's not going to be the last that, one I get. I'll get another one if she messes up. That could type. take a long time, though, to get to the point where you're like, mm. uh, you know, listen, I'm I'm kind of over it now. I'm I'm happy to just be with this one girl. I mean, that can take you a long time. I mean, yeah. that can take you well, to your 40s. Case and, point. <laughs> yeah, well, indeed. I mean, that can, <laughs> indeed, that can take you, you know, to 40s and maybe beyond, 50s beyond. So it's uh, tricky. Good. But I think, I, think, I think Rollo makes a really, really good point, which is that the thing about age is really important because I think a lot of guys will still, even in this day and age, will settle down too early because they think, oh, yep. damn, I'm 30 now. This is, you know, I've got to I've got to find that one and move forward with this and everything. And you really don't have to. And what hopefully if watching shows like this teach you anything, it's that actually, you know, you've got a lot longer than that. Your run rate is, is significantly longer than you think it is. Let's, so uh, don't, 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 don't throw in the towel too soon. That's it, it, in my book, my failing upward death by ego, like my journals, like I'm in there writing in my journals in my twenties, like, oh, I felt like a failure because I wasn't married at like 25. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? So like this is the one of the biggest things I think to this space I think men need to learn is like you shouldn't be looking to get married or serious long term until after 30. Like, mm-hmm. don't even consider it. Yeah. You can have some play relationship. I have, ever, I have guys like, that like ask this question at 18, oh, like, how do I find a good wife? It's like, dude. How do you find a million dollars? Be asking that question. You know, how do I find my purpose? Be asking that question, not how do I find a good wife. I think they always put the you know the car you know right before the horse. It drives me. A lot of guys still have this mentality that like if they aren't married by the time they're nineteen or twenty or whatever, there's something wrong with them. They're put into this. They're put into this like, and I would say this is probably from like blue pill conditioning is that if they're not doing that, if they're not seeking that as early as possible, then they're really what they're doing is they're following a female format because for women when when it comes to their sexual market value peak years. It's 23 years old. So that's when women are at the top of their agency. That's when like men, that's when that life is the easiest for women really is right around 23 years old because that's when men have the most interest in them and they're willing to, to, you know, bend over backwards to make them happy. And, you know, because there's the possibility of having sex with a woman who is in her peak years. When guys see that and we tell guys, you need to be more feminine, the female context is the correct context well yeah of course so they think that they're also peaking right around 24 25 years old and if they don't do something about that if they don't find the right girl if they don't fall in love if they don't find the you know the unicorn or whatever else then that suddenly that they're failures and a lot of that comes from the idea that to be more feminine and to be like to condition yourself to see femaleness as the correct way of existing then yeah of course you're going to see that of course you're going to think that because you're going to think you're Time's up. Mm. Instead of when I get to be 34, 35, 36 years old, I'm going to be hitting my stride. You can't really tell guys that because they're, you know, they're full of, you know, hormones and testosterone and that and a lot of really weird, you know, what uh what God Sod would call uh viral memes or viral ideas that are sort of circulating in their head that if they don't do these things, then like John said, I'm a failure. I'm not doing the things that I should. Uh, I'm not preparing myself for the future for it to be a good husband and to be a good, you know, uh, father and to all this other stuff. And they don't realize because they're not giving themselves permission to be in frame, to be the authority, to give them, you know, to be the guy that says, I'm going to command, command this situation. I'm going to command my life. I get to decide what it is that I want to do. They don't think that they are in control of their lives and they don't give themselves permission to be in control of their lives. Let's uh, hit the super uh, okay. chat on Dread. The super right. chat. I, was say, I was just going to make a quick point. You could read the super chat first and I'll make the point after. Okay. So David's question on Dread is COVID has damaged my Mary Dread game. In my state, uh, gyms are closed. Can't flirt with a waitress as I take it out. I can't get recognized with a mask. You get the point. Um, who wants to hit on this one? Flirting with your waitress is not Dread. That's a display of lower value. A waitress hitting on you is Dread. Yes. First off. <clears throat> that's all. Go up from there. Whatever. 
I think he's got a good point though, hasn't he? I mean, I think I think lockdowns have. Uh, I mean, they've caused multiple problems with relationships, but but the fact that the problem with cohabitation, as I see it, in in the main anyway, is that you, you you've you've demonstrated to her by the fact that you are now living with her that you 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 just don't have the agency that you once had. So in terms of being able to go and be sexual with other with other females or whatever, so immediately that that knocks you down a peg, which is why moving in together is such a huge decision to make. But now we've all been in this situation, or many of us have been in this, this situation where we've been sort of like locked down for months on end, where there's also nothing else to do anyway. It's not like oh, I'm going to go away for a weekend with the boys or something because you know because of the restrictions. So I can see his point. Um, I, I can see why you know, it, that does cause difficulties. And I think we're, unfortunately, I mean, no doubt the guys will be able to come up with some solutions perhaps, but in the end, we are just in this really, really weird period. And to some degree, we're just going to have to kind of ride it out, right? Um, um, but I think it's, I think mindsets within the relationship are important in this. I think this all these guys get too bogged down in like specifics and details. Like, oh, COVID ruined my frame. Oh, I lost my job. I ruined my frame. I, I, I did this and it ruined my frame. I went to church and lost my frame. I went to, it's like whatever is like some, like they're, they're looking for these little sort of individual, like anecdotal reasons <laughs> or details as to why they're, why they're not in control of it in the first place. Now, the immigration wanna, made me lose my frame. I, wait, Solid frame, except for the one thing that got in the way. Exactly. Capital Hill. So let me, uh, let me. I've got a. This is from old. This is old school PUA stuff. So I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go down because a lot. Everybody says, "How do I hold frame? How do I know I'm in frame? What am I doing when I'm not? You know, how can I? How come I'm not in command? How come I'm not this? So here's. And this is old school. Okay. So I'm. I've, I've got about nine little uh, tags here, but I, I don't have to go through all of them. But how does this is how you you want to know how to keep strong frame? You want to have the right mindset to hold frame. Number one is you have to consider yourself the prize. You have to be the one that wherever you're at, this is where it's at, man. I'm the one. I am the prize. I'm going to give myself permission and authority to be the one who is in control of the frame. That's the number one hurdle most guys can't get over. What is do you say, Rolo, when somebody says to you, Rolo, you're you're so lucky to have your wife? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know what I say? I say, she's lucky to have me. That's mm -hmm. what I say. Right. And, and I've done that before because I'm very sensitive to that when like when guys will say like, oh, my here's my little lady and you're my better half or like, you know, I can't believe she'd go out with a schmuck like me. And so what happens, I first of all, I just simply don't do that because it doesn't even enter my brain to like self deprecate in that way, because I know that it's an insult to my wife because she wants to be with the guy who is, you know, high value. And the high value guy doesn't do that. He doesn't self deprecate as as a sort of reflexive thing. So when people say, "Oh, you guys are, you know, you're, you're, you're she's really, yeah, you know, you're lucky to be together. You're lucky to have this girl." I go, "She's lucky to have me." And and of course, everybody laughs at that because it seems sounds like I'm being cocky and funny, which I am. But it's also I'm not like I'm not you like denying it. it either. I'm not going, "Oh, I'm just kidding." Um, so when when people do that, I think that's another thing is when it comes to frame guys reflexively default to their woman's frame because they think that if they lift her up then or if they they make themselves less that they're lifting her up and therefore that makes her feel better or that makes you know her feel like she's superior but what it's really doing is confirming for her and for her hindbrain that you are not the best that she can do when it comes to frame that woman wants to know it wants to have that hypergamous doubt settled. Is he the best that I can do? That's really what it boils down to. Uh, number two is this, is your presence is a gift. So when you're there, your attention is valuable. So if you are the prince and you have the this commoner who is you know the sandwich artist or the barista or whatever it is that comes into your frame you are your time is valuable your attention is valuable and therefore if that's the if that's the mindset that you go into it with and she says yeah where are we going what are we doing you're you're a powerful man you're a, you've got your shit together you're competent you're dominant you're good looking whatever it is act as if that's actually how it works because I've seen so many guys like guys who are the looks maxers and everybody else who says oh well you know all you got to do is just be hot and good looking and women will just fall into your frame they'll be aroused and they'll be attracted but the minute you go oh you're the best I could ever do I don't care how good looking you are the mm -hmm. moment you drop that you're screwed because you're not the prize. Your attention is not valuable. You might be hot and she might still want to have sex with you, but you're you're throwing off that that continuity. You're throwing off the congruity right there because she thinks you're the kind of guy because the way you look, 
that you should have frame, that you should be the one. And when you say, when you empirically prove to her that you don't, you're fucked. That's mm-hmm. that's when it's over. I have like if, you like if the lights the black pills stuff doesn't it? frame mm-hmm. together. If you don't have good frame, they relate those two things, I think. Frame and big game. Fun yeah. is where you are. You have plenty of choices. You you act, you don't react. That's that's a that's an alpha male kind of thing right there. Uh, you make things happen, you command her. Your pleasure is her pleasure. Your okay. frame is all that there is. Okay, your I have a question for you guys. And I just want one person to answer this. Girl, girl comes over, she's on her phone. She's she's staring at the screen. How do you handle that? Okay, I guess I'll do it because I'm I'm the youngest guy here. I do my phone all day. Yeah, because uh, uh, guy. Well, yeah. So chick, if I'm hanging out with a girl and she pulls out her phone, we're supposed to be hang- hanging out. I'll just tell her, hey, put that away. This is this, we're gonna it's uh we're we're hanging out right now. And then she's like, oh, sorry. Most of, and very rarely does a girl actually say, oh, I'm not gonna do it or whatever. Most of the time, she'll she'll do it. You know, what I mean, it's just that she'll be shocked a little bit because you called her out like to do it because, you know, I. I <laughs> Yeah. We live in a world now where like chicks are not used to being held accountable ever. Whatsoever. It's hilarious, dude. Yeah. Who are you talking to? <clears throat> what was that? Who are you talking to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I've seen countless guys in public places or restaurants when they were still open sitting there twiddling their thumbs while she's staring at her screen for not seconds, but like minutes, hammering away, even swiping sometimes. You see the finger motion, right? <laughs> she's on Tinder. <laughs> and they're just sitting there like a Muppet doing nothing. Yeah, no, it's it's just uh, the, the thing is this, and and uh, if you guys uh, caught a couple of shows this week, we had two girls come on that were really high earning OnlyFans girls, right? Mm-hmm. And the reason why we brought them on was because we wanted to give guys a different perspective, right? You melted my brain with one of those shows, Myron. I'm sure <laughs> I yeah. actually lost brain capacity watching one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I became stupider as a result of watching that. <laughs> but this is the thing, though. This is the, this is the thing. So. Uh, why I thought it was so interesting to bring them on was because they confirm. If you listen very closely, which I tell all the guys, and instead of leaving angry comments underneath the the video, watch it with a red lens, and you'll see how many RP truths are confirmed from what they say. Oh yeah. You know I think? And you know, on one side they're saying, "Oh, just be nice and be confident, whatever." All you know, they're they're giving you the typical you know female mm-hmm. uh, I like in a guy. But then on one there, and they're like, they're like, "Oh yeah, well no, I like to get dominated and everything else like this." So. It goes to show like the crazy disconnect from reality that a lot of women have as far as like what they say is attractive versus what they're actually attracted to. And then also as well, going back to what Rolo says, where like a lot of guys self-deprecate, everything like that. The reality is this. The reason why guys self-deprecate and girls do that, uh, girls have a, um, I guess, may select the way they do is because women have an overinflated sense of ego and a lot of guys have a deflated sense of ego. But in reality, man, it's the men that are the prize. And the reason why is because uh, I don't know if you guys watch Kevin Samuels, but you got hundreds of older women calling into his show asking why can't i get a high value guy blah 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 and the, and the, the cold hard truth is this there's very few high value men there's a lot of women though and all the women are fighting for the same top guys but feminism has lots of these women telling him hey you know what you can have it all you can have the corporate job just like john fitch was talking about with his wife uh you know you can earn this money whatever but in reality they end up not being happy i mean danny banks was on the show talking about yeah i talk i, t- I think about it all the time i'm going to be single for the rest of my life this is a girl that's made multi-million dollars on OnlyFans and she's 30 years old. But what? She still has that, you know, innate need to want to have a family, to be able to be in a relationship, everything like that. Because I always say it, man. Women don't get the same satisfaction from success that men do. We're built for this. They're not. But society tells them that they can do both and they can't. So having these girls on shows a lot of light as to like, uh, you know, these girls are making a lot of money, but are they necessarily happy? Who knows, right? Um, but the other thing too also is that... Uh, I think a lot of guys need to really understand and like imprint what Rolo was saying when it says, yo, I'm the prize. You need to feel happy that you're around me because the only way a girl's going to actually respect you and not want to leave you or divorce you, whatever it is, just like Rolo said, she, she's got to know that that doubt of hypergamy is settled and she knows that she's getting the best. So for her to get that feeling, you got to be congruent in your actions and let her know, hey, we're doing this, we're doing that. I'm the prize. And honestly, let's keep it real. Men are the prize because we have to bring so much more to the table than women do. Like, let's just keep it real. Like women have a laundry list of requirements they have on men. But men, we ask for very few things. And the thing is, is that a lot of these women, they they like I love watching Kevin's show because what will happen is these women call in. First thing Kevin asks them, well, what will you provide to a high value guy? Bro, all these chicks can't answer anything. Oh, well, I'm really nice. All these subjective terms. I'm nice. I'm caring, nurturing. Fuck out of here. If you were, you wouldn't be 40 and single. 
It's just that they don't want to hear the harsh reality that they're past their time and society lied to them that, oh, now you make six figures, you're a strong, independent woman, but guess what? You're going to stay independent. So I think guys really need to hammer in that they are the prize, man, not the women. Mm. Uh, I'll say too that I haven't noticed a girl that I've been on a date with uh, since I've been single get on her phone. And if she does, she usually apologizes to me first. It says, sorry, I have to just let my friends know that I'm okay, I'm safe or whatever. It's usually something like that. I can say, though, but my ex, there became a time, though, I think, after I lost my frame, that she was on her phone all the time, scrolling on Instagram or whatever, just not really engaged with me. And that, that should have been something I recognized and, and, and took care of immediately. But, I, you know, that whatever. <laughs> Let me just uh, grab these super chats before we continue. You guys got a uh, another blessing from Tom. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, uh, Bow Bowitz uh, says holding frame with women and children versus holding frame with men uh, coming from first responder marine vessel operator. So I guess I guess this is a question uh, with holding frame with women and children versus like like we mentioned from the get go. There's frame in every engagement you have in a business transaction in a, in a negotiation when you're being hired when you're being trained when you're being fired when you're on a date with your kids, with your woman. So who wants to hit on this one? What is the difference with holding frame with, I, I guess, females? Because he's just assuming frame is about other category. people. It's not about other yeah. people. It's about you. Ryan, you were in the Navy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just it. I See, that's the good. problem. Rich, you that's guys were saying this before. Bro. Remember the guy, like, I broke frame because, you know, Trump's out of office. Or I broke frame because my girl was bitchy that day. Or all these external factors and frame has nothing to do with anything outside of you. It's literally mm -hmm. how you frame your decisions around the world. It doesn't matter if your girl's a bitch mm -hmm. or if your girl's great, if she's checking her phone at the table or not, you have your boundaries. In my case, it's if I'm spending time with somebody at dinner, I'm spending time with them, not spending time with social media. So it could be your wife of 10 years or a Tinder date of whatever it's not, it's just put your phone down. And if she doesn't want to put the phone down, well, then I don't have dinner with people who don't put their phone down and you get up and not have dinner. <clears throat> the children, I, I, the only difference I, between children and women is that children are trainable, I guess is the lack of a better word. More trainable. You know what I mean? Slightly children and dogs. Like yeah, if after the, if let's say one time out of every 20 of, you know, the kid bitching to you guys, dad, I want an ice cream cone. I want an ice cream cone. One out of every 20 times you give her an ice cream cone she is going to bitch harder and louder and more often because she knows if she just does it hard enough, she'll get an ice cream cone. Mm. But if 20 times out of 20, there's no ice cream cone when she bitches, she won't bitch. Ryan, that was savage. I, I, teach, uh, <laughs> I teach to kids, women, men, you know, and frame is frame. Like if I'm teaching a class, if I'm teaching a seminar, I have to maintain that frame as the instructor. If I, if I, let people, <laughs> they're on their phone scrolling while I'm teaching a lesson or they're they're talking and having their own conversation. Like that shit, it doesn't fly. That's my class. I'm teaching. People are here to learn, like get in line. But you hold that frame. It doesn't matter if it's a man, woman, child or are. You're, you're going to maintain the same frame. You're going to have a little bit different delivery. I'm going to be a little bit softer with the kids. Uh, then, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit more and explain things a little bit more to the kids and the women than, than a lot of the men. Um, but it's still going to be the same frame. I'm in control. You know, this is what's going on. If you want the best out of the situation, you're going to pay attention. Mm. Um, let's grab this super and, oh, hang on. We've got, we got almost 1600 people watching and only 667 likes guys hit the uh -huh. button. It takes you nothing. Just give it a smash. It helps out a ton. News. Yeah. <laughs> A Dizzy Pow says, what do you think about if a girl wants you to talk to her parents or dad before being in a long-term relationship? Well, I've got the opposite uh, situation. My girl has never told her parents that uh, she's in a relationship with me because I'm so verboten that if they ever found out, they'd probably disown her. So, uh, so, so I'm not sure. But I think, um, I mean, That's what like a rule to me. Are, are you trying to, is he trying to sort of, why is he being the one who's, trying to persuade her to get into this LTR though? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Shouldn't she be the one who's saying, I'm, I think you're awesome. I want us to be in a long-term relationship. I'm going to go and speak to my parents about this because, you know, it should be that way around surely rather than him sort of thinking, Hmm, what do I do about this? How do I persuade the parents? I agree. Yeah. I think he's trying to, he's trying to have the LTR with her. And then she's like, yes. let me talk to my parents, which 
That could be an L. Could just uh, be an L. It's it's a big L. Anytime you're like asking a girl to be your girlfriend, you lost, bro. Because like mm -hmm. you're basically telling her, hey, you're fine the way you are, and that's it. And that's that that's unacceptable. Because the thing is, is that we always know. Let's keep it real. When you deal with a woman, you're gonna have to stay on your toes and make sure that she behaves and acts the way she's supposed to. So the only way that you're gonna be able to dictate your terms in the future is she's gonna have to come to you. And then you're going to be able to set the standards. You know, basically, you have to become the employer. What you're trying to do right now is become the employee, my friend. So you already lost. <laughs> Myron, I have a question for you. Negative Blips, a channel member, says, Trainable, dude, you just alerted every feminist on the internet. Is this a, is this a useful clip that maybe Ryan can use to get some mass um, reach on TikTok? I, can <laughs> oh, Jesus I mean, it's not punish women, but it's like, you know, train women. Do you think that'll work? Is it? Is dude. it <laughs> on uh, uh as soon as i say anything about like you know dealing with women punishing bad behavior i just get a bunch of How dare you? and it's like bruh like you know <laughs> it, it, it's what it is but like you know what i always say, like it, it's like women don't know what they want they want like a guy that earns a lot of money but at the same time they want an equal partnership they want a guy who's dominant but they also want to say oh i want to be able to you know get, have a 50 50 partnership and it's like it doesn't work that way but the problem is that Women, I always say it, men live in a fact-based reality where your performance creates your reality. Women live in a bizarro fucking world where and, and no matter what they do, how mediocre they are, uh, whatever crazy belief system they have, they're appreciated for it and appraised for it. A fat guy gets clowned on, hey, you're a fat ass, you're a lardo, you need to yep. lose weight, ha, ha, ha. A woman that's fat, it's okay, baby, love your curves, body positivity. So since women live in a world where there's zero consequences to their bad actions, they say dumb stuff like this where... Oh, trainable. What are you talking about? Because they're not used to being ever held by standards. So a guy like me comes around and says, punish bad behavior. Oh, my God. This guy's nuts. He's saying punish bad behavior for women like it's the night. Like yeah, like a dog. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it is. Hey, what it don't is. talk shit about dogs. They're noble creatures. <laughs> Byron's next TikTok will be. Can I wouldn't have told the dogs dog. like that. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, I'll tell you, it's funny about like Ryan will know who I'm talking about. Do you you know who Diana Fleischman is? Obviously. Oh yeah, yeah. Diana Fleischman is a sort of Evo psych, behavioral psych. Uh, you know, she's she, she, she's a doctor. I should say, Doctor Diana Fleischman. Right. She has done these uh, series of talks. I don't know if they were TED talks, but certainly at, like on the college level, and they were titled "How to Train Your Boyfriend." Right. How to like behaviorally condition your boyfriend. And, I, and this is something I've been interested in for a long time because that's my background in, in behavioral psychology. So I was like, how is it that that's cool? But but if a guy were to say, oh, train your like we were just saying a minute ago, like feminists are supposed to lose their mind if you if you talk about that. But yet it's fine for women to say, oh, I'm going to train my boyfriend. But in the next breath, they go and they say exactly what Myron is saying, which is uh, I want a guy who is dominant, taller than me, six pack abs, six figure income, you know, six, six, six. Right. I want the guy who's like all that. And but they don't. But they never it's like that that cognitive dissonance never make they never make that connection right there because what they really they don't really know what they want like children, right? You don't know what is best for you. And mm -hmm. so it takes yeah. a guy with a dominant, competent guy to explain those things to you. The for unfortunate fact is that we live in a gynocentric social order. So me just expressing that or even saying, you don't know what's best for you. I do know what's best for you. For me to say that, now we're out of the sort of equalist, globalist, uh, blank slate, you know, social constructionist crap. And now I'm the misogynist, chauvinist asshole for actually actually having expressed that. Myron, can you give us the story time soundbite, please? I have a story for this. Yeah, I, I got you right now, baby. <laughs> so on a <laughs> at a time not not too long ago, but a long time ago, there was this girl that I broke up with who called me to say goodbye. And I said to her, Well, where are you going? Are you off to Japan to leave for good finally? Because I wanted to get rid of her. She says, no, I'm going to be taking a permanent solution to this temporary problem. She was a succubus as described here. Well, you have two choices. You can hang up on her <laughs> and hope for the best, or you can try to talk her off that and then hang up on her and hope for the best. I chose the latter. Um, yeah, it's just a next, dude. Like, this is not complicated. It's don't be a pussy and move on and, you know, set some firm, firm boundaries. Did you guys want to chime in on this? Final well, only to say that, um, language. <laughs> only to say that um, somebody else's decisions in this kind of matter are their responsibility. You are not responsible, ultimately, for somebody else making mm -hmm. that decision. You know, if you, if you need to remove yourself 
from a relationship for your own benefit for whatever reason that's that's your decision how they respond to that is is their decision ultimately so and and that would go for anybody male or female that that's just how it is so you you can't be tied back by by worrying about that um super chat yeah. saying how to persuade a feminist woman to drop feminism if she has potential but has been brainwashed by the media this is a great question. I, I want to hit on this real quick. We did a video. We did a, a, a podcast where we said uh, types of women to never take seriously in a long term relationship. And feminist was one of them, guys. And the reason why I say you don't want to ever date a feminist or take her seriously, like if you want to smash and pass, cool. But the reason why you don't want to take her seriously is because, quite frankly, feminism teaches women a lot of bad habits that are not conducive to a successful long term relationship with a man. That's the reality. They, they It teaches women to like think that they're your equal to basically absolve themselves of responsibilities when it's convenient for them to say, oh, I'm a feminist at this point, but I also want me to treat you, uh, I, but I also want you to, you know, give me the traditional chivalry. And the problem is that when she can flip-flop her roles versus yours are static, you're going to run into, into a lot of problems with these type of women, man, because like I said before, a lot of feminists live in a bizarre world, not a fact-based reality. So these types of women, bro, I wouldn't even try to, like – Get her to drop feminist. She ain't gonna drop it. You know when women stop becoming feminist, bro? I'll tell you guys right now. When they start having to pay for their own fucking drinks at the bar. That's when they realize they gotta stop being, you know what I'm saying? When they stop being feminist and they realize, damn, I'm getting older. I mm. want to die. What's going on here? That's when, when, war, when there's yeah. a flood, when there's a hurricane. Yes. Right. Blood, water start yeah. right. Because like girls like this, bro, she's gonna expect you to lay your life on the line and protect her if there's physical confrontation, but she won't even make you a sandwich. So you never want to deal with women like this, bro, because they have bad habits that will ruin you, ruin the relationship in the future. So I won't even take a feminist seriously as far as the relationship goes. If you if you pick up on any indicators of a feminist narrative, my advice to you is to set firm boundaries around it and make sure that she understands it's the comply or goodbye narrative. If you don't like it, the front door's over there. You can fuck mm -hmm. off. So that's one of the reasons why I leave with the kink stuff is because I like I say I like to dominate. So Beautiful. if the girls are like, "Oh, well, do I get a turn? When do I get my turn to dominate?" It's like, "No, I'm not. I'm not into that, and I'm not attracted to girls who are." Right. <laughs> put a stamp on it right now. It's I never happening. I've noticed that like women who are like outspokenly feminists are. I don't have problems with them. Like if I go and I lay this stuff out as as you know matter of fact as I possibly can, it's not them that I have a problem with. It's guys. If I go and I say like, you know, men and women are not equal and I can give you examples as to why the idea of equality is just nonsense. And of course, the first thing that that guys think is that I'm saying that men are superior. I go, well, it depends on what we're talking about. What's the challenge? Is it giving birth? Well, women are superior at giving birth than men to, to men. There's your challenge. That's if that's what we're measuring equality by, guess what? I'm always going to be at a disadvantage in that in that particular realm. If we're talking about physical violence, if we're talking about uh, you know, protection, providing, whatever, what's the challenge, right? I can go and make those like really rational, kind of pragmatic uh, you know, approaches to like what's equal and what's not. The very fact that I said that men and women aren't equal, it's not so much women that have the problem with that, because usually if they're as a feminist she doesn't want to have any she either doesn't want to talk to me or she has no other counter argument but it's the guys who get upset with me they'll go well, what are you saying that, that men are better than women no that's not what i'm saying but it's the guys because they have more to lose they have more invested in that that overall um the nice the, guy thing. yeah the nice guy thing but they have more invested in that because they realize that if if they are seen even like at a distance agreeing with, with Rolo Tomasi saying that, you know, equality doesn't exist between men and women, then they're, they think that they're at a disadvantage or if they're not going to be able to relate with women or women are going to uh, shun them because you agreed with what I had to say. I uh, got another super here. He said, what if you're 24, girl is 21, long-term relationships, both ambitious, working hard, upper 20 to 30% of market. Isn't that more efficient to have needs met plus stability in terms of productivity and maximizing potential? What? This is complicating <laughs> life and justifying why. Yeah. Why are you in a long-term relationship at 24, dude? 24. I mean, in 10 years, you're 34. She, she's 31. All the money that you've made now, she deserves half of it because that's what, hap that's what happens in the divorce. So, like, I mean, I tell this to a lot of people with their kids when they want to talk. When do I start my kid in jujitsu or wrestling or whatever? I, I tell them, well, like, I work a little bit for fun with my kids, but it's not a real thing until, you know, eight, nine, 10 later. 
um, I want to start them at four or five because most people don't do shit for 10 years. Like how many activities can you think of that you've maintained and been into and, and, and like actively happy about being involved in for 10 years or more? Most people, it's not going to happen. Most people are into something for a short period of time, a few years, and then they gravitate towards something else. I don't, I don't see the relationship is, is too much difference, especially when you're in your 20s and you haven't had the experience of a lot of different women. You get into your 30s, 35 now, you've made a lot of money and now you're getting interest and in, I, uh, you know, uh, interest from girls who are 22 like it, it's it maybe maybe it's an outlying situation that works out but uh, not really probably not here's um here's a frame question woman communication is key man what's wrong woman nothing good night how would you guys handle that not about the nail it's not about the nail expand that's exactly <laughs> what that is is it's not about the nail Women don't care about solving problems. They just want to be, they just want to tell you about their problems. Remember, women begin their, if it's problem solving, whatever, it begins in emotion, instinct, emotion, and reason. Men, it's instinct, reason, and then emotion. Because so what guys do, and we can see this in the way that we communicate. There's that video. It's called, it's not, it's not about the nail. It's like this couple, they're sitting on this couch. The woman has a nail stuck right in her forehead. And she's talking about, I've got this real pain here. And she's like, she's like emoting and just like, you know, adjectives are just flowing and everything else. And the guy goes, well, maybe we should pull that nail out of your forehead. You know, like, like seeing the obvious answer mm -hmm. and she gets all pissy and, and angry at him for like, it's not about the nail. That's the whole title of it. It's mm -hmm. meant to be funny and everything, but it's white man can't jump. Remember white man can't jump sure, when sure. Uh, she asked, she's like, I'm thirsty. So he go gets her a glass of water. She's like, I don't want a glass of water. I said I was thirsty. I want you to, to sympathize with my thirstiness. Right, mm -hmm. right. It's not about the nail. It's not about the problems. The men are innate problem solvers. That's what we think. That's why John Fitch, sorry to say, but probably why you are not no longer married is because if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And so you go, oh, okay, well, I'll try to fix the problem. I'm going to solve a problem. And she is a constant problem that I have to constantly solve all the time. And if you're doing that, then suddenly you're not, it's not about the nail. It's about her like bitching and moaning. It's about you understanding the larger sort of meta narrative of this thing is you're never going to make her happy. It's never going to, that's ne you're never going to make mama happy. So happy, but it's if you yeah. Say that again, John, to cut off. You're never going to make her happy, but it's your fault if you don't. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you can't win, why play, right? I'm talking about with the Cosmo Writer debunk. What? I don't know what that is. I wish I did. I I, I don't know what the Cosmo Writer is. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll skip that one. Uh, Rafi says, "Hello, people. Ryan Stone, will you put out a new book this year? Your last book was real good, by the way. You guys are doing great work, Raf." It's already started. I've got signed on to the newsletter. You can watch me kind of write it in real time. It's a technique I stole off of Vinkatesh Rao, where he kind of writes it as a newsletter and then puts the final touches on the second and third drafts on his private time. Uh, it's going to be on Dread. It's been updated. I mean, there's already a book on Dread out there, but it's about six years out of date. It's missing a lot of field reports. I'm basically sitting in here going through like seven years of married guys and their progress here to put something comprehensive together. So it's going to be exciting. You're going to like it. When does that come out? When I'm done. <laughs> When's your second book coming out, Rich? <laughs> right away. Well, I, I want it out before the end of the year, though. I think that a 12 months is like a reasonable timeline. So, although what Rolo said that two years before, so I don't know. Uh, Sometime Roman, in between one and three years. <laughs> it's, coming, it's coming just like Christmas, just like the seasons. It'll be out. Yeah. It's like uh, COVID quarantines every <laughs> Rumblefish. Yeah. Uh, where do you draw the line between a submissive LTR and essentially having a teenage daughter? Does holding frame create overly dependent behavior in your long term? She's always going to be the oldest teenager in the house, regardless of your frame. Yeah, this goes back to what we were saying before. So just like we hold women accountable and say, hey, you can't have it all where like you want a guy that's going to be dominant, aggressive, all these other things, but have an equal partnership, it comes the same way. If you want her to be submissive, you're going to have to be comfortable with the fact that you're probably going to have to lead her in all aspects of her life. Because yeah. here's the thing, man, like if you're going to, because, all right, I'm just, I'm just going to say it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we talk about this Muslim for people that don't, that don't know. My dad worked really hard to keep my sister from doing stupid things because he knew if you left a woman to her own devices, she would sabotage herself. You know what I'm saying? So you as the as the boyfriend slash leader slash husband, you got to understand that with that submission, 
comes a consequence, guys, which means you're probably going to have to support her morally, financially, etc., which is fine because as a man, you're built to do that. That's why we tell you, like, I have five rules before you even think about getting into a long-term relationship. Number one, you need to be in shape, right? Because when you're in shape, it's going to say a lot about you. Number two, you need to have at least uh, six months of savings in the bank. Number three, make $100,000 a year, if not more, okay, if you live in, a, uh, in the West or in, in the United States. No, uh, then uh, number four, be at least... 35 years old, and then I can't remember the last one right now. But those, just with those four right there, you're going to set yourself up to be in a position where you can actually dictate your terms and be what I consider like an uh, entry-level high-value guy. So when you're entry-level high-value guy and a woman is deferring to your authority, that comes at a cost, man, and that means that you're going to have to lead her. Now, just like John said, I agree. She's going to be the oldest teenager in the house. She's going to be able to do some things here and there. But at the end of the day, you're still going to have to direct her, and you should be fine with that because – you're the man, bro. It's just that, just like I say, society poisons women to think that they're masculine. They can do, they can have it all. It also poisons men to not understand that there is a burden of performance in all aspects of your life to include leading your relationship. Mm. Well, I think most guys, I think most guys wouldn't have this problem though, to be honest. I think most guys who are watching yeah, this, will, yeah. the, the, the problem is going to be the opposite, right? The problem yeah. is going to be maintaining that frame. Mom, in the first place. Mom, I, I think it's probably harder to manage a teenage daughter than it is a submissive LTR. I mean, you've had a teenage daughter, Rola, what would you say? I would say this is that I don't think that this is the major concern of most guys because yeah. most guys are not they're not concerned about being so domineering that their wives are going to be these little submissive like sort of house frows right like these these little wallflowers that oh can I please do it you know like mommy daddy you know, like that kind like having that parent slash child relationship with their, their wives if if anything it's the other way around. It's yeah. the guy that it's the guy that is like, can I please watch hockey in the spare room on the little TV? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like those guys All that right. don't want to work out because they'll get too big. I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, yeah. This one girl who she was into like kink stuff. This is like one of the first girls I dated uh, was into that stuff. But she was like wanted to live the dom like lifestyle. Like we went out to eat and like she wouldn't, you know, I had to like cut her food and like put her food on her plate for her. Well, I mean, she wanted like, you know, she would like stand and wait for me to open a door, and like mm -hmm. it was like a hundred percent like tell her what to wear, put what to put on, where to go. It was uh, it was kind of a trip. Well, it's like guys who say I don't want a girl who's dumb. I want a girl that I can carry on a conversation with, right? Like that's and that's their <laughs> sort of rationale for wanting this co-equal co-rational relationship and again it's not about the nail i think a lot of guys get really kind of bent out of shape because i mean I, I, granted it's a it's a joke right but it's not about the nail but they get upset because what happens is it shows women's real nature when it comes to emotionalism rather than uh and, and that of course throws off this um, impression that women are co-equal co-rational like blank slate equalism like right? she's she's just like me and i'm just like her she just has different parts than i do and so therefore she should we should be able to have this rational conversation and open communication will work blah 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 and so when the guy says well you have a problem let's solve your problem and she's like not about the nail like she's freaking out and you're like well why, why is so suddenly she's not really rational suddenly she's there must be a problem let's take her to see there let's get her to therapy because she's not what i've always been told to expect from women all this time so therefore she's you know there's something either wrong with her or there's something wrong with me and usually they pathologize it on themselves they say it must be something that i'm doing that's making her like this so if yeah. there's a problem it's never the woman's fault because women are wonderful right and they're co-equal and if she's not co-equal and co-rational and she's acting irrationally it's not her fault it's because i drove her to being irrational it's because i put her into that position so i need to change me so that she could if mama ain't happy ain't nobody happy so if i change myself that will make her happy because she's not acting in the way that i would have expected her to act I had a quick point uh, just to add. So I said 100K, five things before you go. And I did a show on this, guys, if you want to check it back on my channel, uh, the, the old Gaines podcast when I used to do those. But $100,000 a year, six months of savings, be in shape, 35 years old, and a 50 lay count. Basic, very basic things that I think a lot of guys can achieve. But I think once you have these things in place, you'll be able to put yourself in a position where you'll be able to have a long-term relationship, and then more importantly, enforce boundaries. Because when you have an LTR, that's when the game actually begins, where you now you're going to have to start actually reinforcing your boundaries and if you're not high value enough right i always talk about the pokemon trainer and having enough badges like if you don't have enough badges she ain't going to respect you and these yeah. things right here is entry level
Yep, yeah, absolutely. It, it never bears re- uh, repeating that an LTR is, is is the game played on hard mode for sure, yeah. and marriage is even even the harder mode, um, top level. Let me catch up on these supers. So we got uh, Talal Mail with a super chat. Thank you, uh, Prina joined the channel membership. Thank you, Jason. The Dream says thank you guys for bringing a light to this topic. Dropping uh, road, dropping road troops today. Cool. Go press the light. Press the light button. <laughs> uh, Nick Too Quick says, what type of women are alone in their late 30s and early 40s? I think I see lots of overweight women married or in long-term relationships. Do these men have frame? What do you guys Why do you want to speculate on those guys? <clears throat> they aren't you. Um, I'll say this. Um, what type of women are alone in the late 30s and early 40s? Bro, it's a successful chicks, man. Like uh, That's really what it is. It, they did a study. And they found that the least happy demographic of American uh, in the United States is a woman in her 40s making over $100,000 a year that has no children. You know what I'm saying? So graduate degree. Uh, and, and the thing is, you guys want to know. So, uh, again, uh, Kevin Samuels, you guys know, he's a friend of mine. The reason why he blew up uh, is because he's been saying what people have known for a while, but he's finally been, he, but he finally said it in an eloquent manner that women can actually understand. You know what I'm saying? Buy a dog, die alone. If you're gonna, if you're gonna have these crazy high standards for men, and now, you know, slowly but surely, I still think it's gonna take a while for women to understand that, like, you know, men are clearly the prize. They're gonna have to start lowering their their uh, requirements. But in general, a lot of the women that I see that are single in their 30s and 40s, that they're high earning women that are successful that refuse to settle on men that make less money than them or are less successful or less ambitious than them because women aren't like us. They can't date down. They're like almost incapable of doing it. And if they do. Which again, once it, which is hilarious because I had Katana on yesterday. She earned more money than her pr- prior husband, right? So I was like, "Oh, did you guys divorce?" She was like, "Yeah." I said, "Who initiated it?" She said, "She did." Okay, who made more money? I did. Okay, did you guys did you take half your money? Whatever. She's like, "No, I definitely signed a prenup." So it's amazing to me how intelligent <laughs> women are when it comes to uh, marriage when oh, they're sure. the ones making sure. the, making more money. You know what I'm saying? So she knew from the beginning, I'm definitely signing a prenup. I make more money than them, and only and they only lasted about two years. But men are so happy to, you know, get married, give their half their money away, whatever it is, because I've always said it. Men are comfortable sharing their resources. Women aren't. What's yours is hers and what's hers is really hers. You know what I'm saying? Because they're not built to share resources like us. So, yeah, man, it's typically older chicks that uh, these these women that you're talking about are typically women that make more money is what I've noticed, at least. Oh. A lot of money, very high standards, and no self awareness around their true sexual marketplace value. Yeah. Well, they, they also want to date boys. men who are relatively the same age. Yeah, but men that are the yeah, same age, right. I'm not. Younger, I'm not. They don't want anything to do with a 40 year old chick if they can get a 25 year old girl. Yeah. Like, I don't even talk to girls older than 32. Right. Yeah. Uh, the other, I, just more to like Myron's point, there is that there is this push. There's been this push for a long time on guys saying you need to lower your standards. You need to to recognize that beauty is a social construct, and the only reason you like those centerfolds is because you know you've been trained from little boy to to like you know blonde hair, blue eyed. You know, we were talking about this in the body fat acceptance thing that we did last week, right? And I, that got me thinking, especially right now, is like that's it's so it's not okay for men to have standards, but it is absolutely imperative that women have standards to the point where they are entitled to the guy who's taller than them, more in shape than them, uh, has more money than them, has you know has all these things like Patrice O'Neill was saying, have all these things, and then you have to consider yourself being her equal. Women are not looking for an equal, and. Because we live in a gynocentric social order, we say, men, you need to be above and beyond these women so that you can be even considered an equal. And we see this on a meta social scale right now. And what we don't tell women is what we've been telling men for the last like four or five generations, which is everything's a social construct until it comes to women. And then it's not a social construct. Then it's okay for them to want to get a prenup, make more money than them. And and then we say, you go girl when she gets a divorce or whatever else, because she's getting hers kind of thing. And we don't tell women, you need to accept 
fat guys and the, the 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 dad bod guys and you you have to change your um your d- degree of arousal your degree of of acceptability for men because men right now as we we know the lost boys generation they're not going to college they're they, they don't see any like the juice isn't worth the squeeze they don't see any point in in participating in the game we talk about this all the time and so you've got this generation well at least the last two generations of guys who have not felt the in have not been incentivized to be anything more than they are because they don't see point in it, but we haven't changed women's perspective. We haven't said, ladies in the future, if you want to get married, you're going to have to go out with these losers right here because they don't see any point in like being winners for you anymore. But we, but women don't want that. They're like, no, no, I, I need the guy who's taller than me, stronger than me, better looking than me, has more money than me. I need the guy who is my equal, who's more than I am. And so we don't take away that, that sort of biological old school standard of what that guy ought to be, to be like sort of the ideal, the apex that they all deserve just like Myron was saying, I deserve all of this stuff. I'm entitled to all of this stuff. And it's men's fault for not living up to my expectations. But those expectations are not, we don't tell women those expectations are founded on social constructionism. We just go with whatever's good for women, which is old school evolved interest in what like a guy who can, who has the three P's, right? Protection, provisioning, and parental investment. And he looks good and he fucks her really well. That's what she's entitled to. But we don't say that's a social construct. We say that that's just just the way things are. And real right. too, I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say something after you do strip chat. Talayal May says, I'm dating a woman that sees me as very high value. As a result, she wants to take me out on a date. If I let her, sorry, if I let her, will that make me lose frame? Here's what you oh. do. You just say, you just kind of chuckle. That's cute. I appreciate that. Here's what I want you to do. Make me my favorite meal. I want you to wear this. And afterwards, we're going to do that. That's how you handle that. Yeah, hundred percent, Rich. Why would you talk a girl out of wanting to take care of you? That right. makes them happy to make you happy. That's put, a good put thing. Her in her feminine frame, not to Your take pleasure you. is her pleasure. Make me, mm-hmm. make me dinner. Wear what I tell you to wear, and we're doing this afterwards. We're wow. busting out the Santa Claus outfit with the sex swing, baby. <laughs> because, uh, what we were talking about earlier when I said like, like, uh, like you know, how I asked that girl, she she made more money, and then the, the marriage lasted two years, but she made sure to sign a prenup, whatever. I'll take it a step further. A lot of women aren't stupid enough to cuck themselves and go ahead and raise another man, another woman's children either. You know, if there's a single dad, right? Yep. A lot of women will automatically disqualify that guy as a potential suitor because he has children. The only time I've ever seen women go ahead and shack up with a guy that has kids that now she's going to come in and be this foster mom or not the foster mom, the stepmom is uh, the guy has a lot of money, a lot of expendable resources. Then she'll be like, okay, you know what? He has more resources for, for me and the kids. I can come into this and, and help raise the kids. But it's amazing to me how intelligent women are when they're dealing with their own money as far as like getting a prenup if they make more money or not cooking themselves and dealing with a guy that has children from another woman, whereas guys are so easily open to – Getting married, losing half their money. Go ahead and getting cucked by by a by a chick and like raising another man's children's uh, children while understanding that hey, I can lose all this at any time because these are not my children. So, uh, it's it, it, <laughs> women understand the game like to another degree, and I need guys to understand that too. That cucking yourself and um. You, uh, cucking yourself and was uh, is just not a good move. You know what I'm saying? Because women even know it. And then women sign prenups when they have the money. So it's like guys need to start adopting that mindset where it's your <laughs> first, not women first. Rumble Fish, it's more of a statement, but he said uh, power of a man, privilege of a woman, accountability of a child. That tweet stuck with me this week and describes my LTR. Frustrating at times, but better than the opposite, I guess. Thanks, guys. That's, um, yeah, that's just the reality of, of stuff for most men that, that um, struggle with maintaining frame. Um, we got like uh, 13 minutes left. What else do we need to cover before we wrap up the show, guys? Whammon, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> no. I well, well, Rich, can I just... Oh, sorry, Roll. I'll pass it off to you here quick. Uh, been, uh, do you notice the theme, like... though, is guys always asking about her? Like all the super chats, great bunch of guys switched on audience, but you guys are focused way too much on her and not enough on yourself. Right. And this is how Rolo's comment about how guys keep placating and thinking uh all that uh doormat shit it happens because you're not even thinking about it from your own perspective like make yourself the main character in your own life story and you guarantee a lot of these questions will answer themselves very easily Mm. Mm. i'm done for the day (laughs) what about the the idea about um death by a thousand cuts as well because this 
does these problems do tend to arise because of concessions that happen slowly over time, right? As you're going into the LTR, yeah, and, and and <laughs> and so you need to be. If you're embarking on an LTR or you're looking to in the future, you need to be very mindful from the beginning that you don't allow the rot to set in because it, it's really, really easy to do that. And the, it, the problem is that some some compromises are necessary in an LTR, but you've got to be very, very mindful of when you're giving away too much ground. And that can be a really subtle, difficult balancing act. Which is why, you know, some uh, and you've got to, I, I think as well, just make the decision: is this what I really want to do? Do you know what I mean? Like, it, you might be better off just being a renegade bachelor for the rest of your life and just just not not even entering into the game. Because I believe that the LTR game, and particularly the marriage game, is so tough that you've got to really sit down and think: Is it, do, do you know what I mean? Is it really? Is that actually what I want to do, or do I just want to like enjoy the you know myself in different ways with dating uh, around and just having a good time? John, it's a lot of risk in long term marriage. I'm playing the game now where. I'm trying to develop long-term relationships that are allowing me to date other women. <laughs> mm, mm. You know, um, just because I don't, I don't want to lose lose that. I, I don't want to invest time, energy, resources, and risk half of my finances and my kids' inheritance to oh, I fell in love. You know, I, I don't, yeah. I don't do that. So I, I'm keeping keeping that frame of like you can you can be my girlfriend. You can only you know I'll I'll provide you with all the dick you need. But uh, I'm also going to date. Mm. Run that there, are, there are different. There are different models. You know that you don't have to follow the the, oh, the old to. traditional model. Mm. Yeah, uh, we got a super chat here from Bulldog Mindset. Uh, John says women always want uh, men that are better than them. How much better than her you are will determine how she treats you. Yeah, it's true. Mm. Uh, Karina James said, majority of women are just confused and follow women as Katina Savage. Does anybody know who that is? That, that's the girl I interviewed yesterday on my show. Oh. Okay, who is that? She's uh she's the OnlyFans uh girl slash model. She's in like the point oh oh one of percent of earners. Oh, like that um like, like Danny Banks. Yesterday. Yeah, just like Danny Banks, exactly. Okay, and then men uh men have to be able to tell the difference. Uh BW confused, not confused. What's what's BW confused? Between, I think she means. Confused not few. Okay, got it. Yeah, majority of women are just confused and following. Yeah, because like there aren't a lot of good men out there. So like, if you have a good frame, good solid frame, you'll see a lot of these chicks just be like, "Oh, I've never experienced this before." They'll they'll have never encountered somebody like you, and you'll snap them out a lot of that feminized fog they're in. It's like once they actually have that that man that can lead them, like they drop a lot of that bullshit. Yeah. Like I, Ryan knows this, and I use the actually use this part in uh, in book four. Um, remember Ryan about uh, what was it was was it Whisper who said something about like how our innate way of dealing, like men and women, our innate way of dealing with them is almost like a child slash like our protection instinct or defense instinct or the things that like yeah, it's a feature, not a bug. It's a feature, not a bug, and and I think that more. I think women are actually relieved when you take control when you are the guy who's framed she wants to be into because it answers a lot of questions for her it's like can he protect me yes is he uh does he have provisioning yes is he parentally invested eh, probably at some point but it's that it's the uh for the same uh instinct for protection that women have over kids they're looking for that same level of protection and investment from guys who are you know, who are competent and dominant, who answer the hypergamous question is, is he the best I can do? If that answer is yes, then you're going to establish a relationship with that really kind of almost seems like uh, you're the parent and she's the child because women are the vulnerable sex. They're looking for that guy who is in control, whose world she wants to enter into, who will provide that long-term security because I don't think a lot of guys realize this, but when we look at women in their most powerful stages, in their most powerful age, Ages, right 23 when she is at her the peak of her sexual market value she's at the peak of her agency we look at that and we go oh my god because all guys no matter what the age 15 to 70 want a woman who's right around that age that's the when they say that that's when that woman looks the best that's what they want to get with and it just so happens that at that age she happens to be at her the peak of her agency right there and so what they don't see is that that woman is only at that peak for a very brief time in her history. In her, or like if she I hope women live a long life, right? But like right at like say 23, consider this, that 
for the vast majority of the rest of her life, she will never be as powerful. She will never have as much agency. She will never be as sexy as when she was 22, 23, 24 years old. That lasts for three years of a life that might span 80 years. And so it's all, it goes high and then it like goes out and it's done for men. It's like this slow kind of curve. And then we kind of, we, we peak and then we kind of have a very slow descent kind of thing. So we are in, we men, and, and John said this at the beginning of the show, men overall throughout the course of a lifetime, men have more power than women do. Men have more agency than, or the potentially have more agency than women do. If you maximize that potential, because your potential is Again, potentially longer lasting than that woman's uh, peak potential is going to be in the long term. Women on some level of consciousness know that once they get to the epiphany phase, once they get to a, they pass the wall, that they're going to spend most of their lives security seeking. They're going to be looking for the guy who's going to provide, who's going to protect, who's going to be parentally invested, who when he's hitting his peak is still going to want to be – has wife goggles, right? Is still going to want to be with her over the course of the long term because he has either some sort of commitment or he has some sort of – however he sees her, he's in love with her, whatever it is. But what what's throwing everything off, of course, is feminism at this point and gynocentrism because it says you're going to be the one who's in control of this guy for the rest of your life. And women don't want that control. A woman cannot look up to a man who she considers her equal, and she's looking for a guy that she considers above herself, the guy who's in control, the guy who's competent, the guy who answers the hypergamous question. Let's uh, get this next super. Why is Cooper's book outselling Aaron Cleary's book? So <laughs> if, you're, if you're not- I can't tell if that's a knock or not. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron, <laughs> Aaron, a little upset lately that my book sells more than his does. I don't care. I'll tell you why. It's because I'm a better marketer. Um, people people send me uh, gratitude and, and thank you notes and pictures of the book. And every time they do, I respond to every single person with a note. And I always ask them to leave a review on Amazon. Because of that, um, I've got a little over 400 reviews right now, which is actually catching up on Aaron's bestseller, which is Bachelor Pad Economics. So Aaron's a good guy. I'm sure his book's amazing. I look forward to reading it. It's it's um, it, it it has arrived. I just haven't picked it up from the post office box, so I'm looking forward to that. Aaron's and then, book of numbers is very popular with the black pill crowd. If he's selling a lot, it's probably because the black pill kids are like, yeah, yeah, this is the proof that we need. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the second half of the question is, what does Rollo think of academic psychologists? They seem ideologically <laughs> monolithic. Yes. They What's are. your opinion on Jeffrey Miller, Rollo? It's funny because Jeffrey Miller did not wasn't the. If you say academic psychologist, I, he's not the first one that comes to mind. Actually, um, I think the I, I think of stats first of all, and it's like what is it? Almost ninety percent of new college graduates that uh, graduate with a psychology degree are women. And that has been that case that that's been the case since like the early like 2010s, like 2012. You mm -hmm. see this rapid increase in like communication majors and psychology majors. So when I look at like organizations like the APA, like the American Psychology Association, I have to sort of take those things with a grain of salt. So like uh, Ryan, you know this because I've been I've been locking horns with Rolf uh, Dengren or whatever the hell his name is because he mm -hmm. he'll throw out all of these things about like oh yeah ovulatory shift is it looks like it's it looks like we're finally putting a nail in that coffin. It's like no we're not. I can show you all these other studies that will prove that ovulatory shift is actually a thing. But furthermore, of course they are. Of course he's looking for these things because right now when women get into psychology, they don't want that unflattering you know, shit to be out there. So yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm more concerned with the fact that there's more women in psychology than there are men. That's scary. Uh, our good question. All women. Mm -hmm. I was saying the same thing with education. It's like all yeah. women. Like yes. our Look, kids are getting dominated by women with with this ideology from women their whole lives. And then if there's a problem, they go to a psychologist who's also in this woman, female yeah. cult. Where you, it's, you wonder why there's communists and socialists in our education system? Look at how look at the demographics. Look at the sexual demographics of even public schools right now. You'll see that it's over what seventy seven percent of teachers from kindergarten all the way to postgraduate stuff is all women. I think I'm, I'm just strongly believing that that socialism and uh, um, communism is one hundred percent a female yes. orchestrated thing because it guarantees them 
resources. Uh, John, you need to read my, you need to read religion. I talk about exactly that in religion. Uh, I, I still got to start the first year for the second book. <laughs> I've got, a, I've got stacks of books that I have. I've not been getting to yet, but Brian yeah. from Hypnosis for Men says, excellent point by Fitch. You have your world on lock. Uh, a lot of the BS falls away in a hurry. True. Mm -hmm. um, let me get these other supers before you wrap up here. I feel bad for alpha widowing these good girls. When I spin plates, how do you leave a girl without room? Ruining her future chances of a happy marriage. Ryan, how do I leave them better than I found them? <laughs> Dude, I, Carl and I hated that one. First off, every girl I've ever dated, the only thing they say about their exes is how they were abusive assholes. So I have a hard time believing that you're that awesome, that you're leaving a trail of spinsters behind you. Like, I get it. It sounds cool to say, but in you're reality, not, she forgot well, about you when your ass hit the door, man. Don't even worry about it. I mean, one thing to say is you want to get out reasonably early. I mean, you don't want to be dating her up until she's in her mid thirties and then saying, Oh, right. See, sorry. See you later. You know, like, and, um, you know, you, you, you want to be just, just relatively upfront and honest about what the situation is, you know, look, this is not, you know, we're here. I like you. We have a good time together. It's cool, but I'm just not looking for anything, you know, longer term than that at, at the moment. If I was, Mate, you'd be the kind of girl I'd definitely go for, but I, but I'm not at the moment. And then it's her responsibility. Um, and then James Chasen asks, "I've never heard of the black pill. What is that?" I have a <laughs> well, tonight, <laughs> I don't, I don't ask. ask. I want to read it, but Rolo, do you want to explain the black pill? Maybe very briefly. Right. Black pill. Black pill is just doomers. That's all it is. It's not a racial thing. <laughs> it's, it's 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 guys who are on the extreme end of MGTOW. It's guys who just simply give up. It's incels mostly. It's guys who just simply don't they they want to opt out of a game that they can't really opt out of. So they just basically spend their time bitching and complaining and commiserating about how fucked up things are for themselves and how they're never going to be successes. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. I've heard this eight hour live streams at the end of the day. Yeah. What um, do they win by, by being right? If they, you know, they're fighting so hard about this black pill stuff. Like, what do you win? What are you getting out of it? I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, the game, you know, oh, it's rigged. Okay. Well, how are you going to, so what are you going to do? You got two choices. You can sedate yourself and go jerk off violently, or else you can go out there and be better at what it is that you, you can make yourself into a better person. So, I, I've yet to see these guys like cure cancer. I've yet to see these guys like show me the, the next big thing in software, the next big thing in technology, the next big thing in, you know, biochemistry or whatever. Can, can we take a step back? How do you jerk off violently? Okay, last, last, we got no more because we got to wrap up, guys. Uh, Fred, Fred Freeman says, uh, can the increase in the obesity rate explain some of the dynamics going on with 70% overweight? Few options exist as replacements. Extra body fat's going to mess with your hormones. Oh. So that's kind of what the craziness going on, I think. Yeah. Unhealthy people are an anxious. They have all kinds of mental problems, and 90% of it's because of diet, nutrition, and lack of exercise. Is there, is there a correlation between that and cortisol? Well, yeah. But I mean, like, women don't respect fat, gross men. They're not going to be led by a guy that's 400 pounds. So let's put it that way, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's wrap up. Uh, what's everybody up to this week? Let's do the round tables. Uh, Rolo, you're up first. Uh, I will be doing my show tomorrow. Uh, that will be at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. I don't have a topic as yet, but I'll probably release it this afternoon or this evening. Uh, I will not have a Wednesday show because I will be on Myron Gaines' show on Wednesday with Hotep Jesus live in studio in Miami. So uh, if you're looking for my show, just go switch over to Myron's and you'll be able to catch me there live. I don't know what time we're going to do it just yet, but I'm sure we'll announce. So follow my Twitter feed and you'll you'll get the schedule. I'm going to be on with you on what on Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm gonna, I know I'm going to do one show show with you solo, and then I'm going to do one with 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 Hotep. I'm there till Friday, so I could even do a Thursday too now. But mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's what I got going on this week. I will be in Miami this entire week. Also, I wanted to say that if you are if you happen to be in Miami and you want a signed book or you want to come shake my hand or tell me I'm full of shit, then I'm I'll be happy to meet with you in Miami live in person at that point. But that's my first sort of. Uh, stop for what I'm hoping is going to be a kind of a, a small scale book tour for book four, which is out right now. It is still the number one new release in religion and science and in religious
religious studies and in you look at the religious uh, category on Amazon and you will find it. It's on Kindle and it's on it's in print right now. So it's out there. It's doing very well, selling way better than I actually anticipated it to. Also, March is when we're supposed to have the uh, Sam Bada's in the chat. I know. So uh, we're going to have the uh, uh, Audible uh, available by March. So Rolo stock coming to Miami soon. Uh, John, what's up? I have my show, John Fish Knows Nothing, tomorrow night, 7 on the left coast. Uh, books available on Amazon. Go to johnfish.net. Sign up for the newsletter. I got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, courses on Gumroad. I got another one coming up that uh, shows you how to close the distance, get in on a clinch. A lot of guys don't know how to do that. Um, yeah. Uh, check out the show tomorrow. All right. And Myron. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, we're going to have Rolo in studio uh Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday, we'll do a show with Rolo, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, guys. And then Wednesday, we'll have him and Hotep Jesus, uh, basically the, the Twitter the Twitter guys. <laughs> and we'll talk about masculinity and current topics and stuff like that. We'll be answering phone lines, super chats, everything like that. So, yeah, guys, stay tuned uh, for next week. And, uh, yeah, we got some good stuff coming. And that's well, uh, the Fresh Fit. That's it. Yeah, I was going to say, it's on the Fresh and Fit uh, show on YouTube. Ryan? Two big things. The channel's still going strong. Sidebar series is going to be adding to that real soon. Just get on the newsletter, rhinestone.com slash newsletter. You can basically follow me through the process of getting book two out there. It's probably the most comprehensive research and material that's been out on Dread over the last 10 years. So anything you were afraid to ask about fixing failed relationships and fixing men who have been failing, but were afraid to ask, it's all going to be in there. And you get to follow me along for the entire process. And that's it. And Troy. Join me on my YouTube channel where I am in the process of breaking down The Art of Seduction by Robert Greene, which is one of the great classics of game literature. So we've been going through it, myself and Jack Napier. Uh, we had John MLD come in last week as well. Uh, hopefully he'll be coming in again to talk about some of the other sections, maybe some of the other guys here. So join me on my channel for that. Also on Monday, I hope to be talking to Mr. James Tusk, the day game expert who is currently in Mexico. So we're going to be finding out what the scene is like on the ground down in Mexico, where there are few restrictions and a lot of fun. So join me over there. Get on my free daily email list as well. When you go to my YouTube channel, in any of the descriptions, you'll see a link to that free daily email list. So do get on that too. All right. And just I'll put the ticker on the bottom. If you guys want to get on my email list, it's entrepreneursincars.com forward slash red flags. You get the free chapter on red flags. If you haven't got it, get my book. It's a great read. It's highly rated right now. And uh, audio is coming out soon. I am reading it. It'll be out by spring, summer. Don't ask me for the date. It's coming. Um, also, I'm taking Collins again on Before the train wreck on Monday night. So 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can call in. Uh, young, old men, women, I don't care. Call in after I cover the main topic. It's a live show. Uh, I see a super there from Pedro. If you want to call in Monday, Pedro, I'll put you at the front of the line. I'll just look for your name. Sorry, but we don't have time during the rest of this show to take another super. But uh, gentlemen, thanks for joining. Uh, follow the uh, awesome league of gentlemen that we have here, and we'll see you guys in the next show. Um, who's hosting next Saturday? Uh, I think it's John, John from MLD. Okay, there you go. All right. He hasn't done it in a while. Actually, I should be me, but I'm going to be coming back from Miami, so John's going to be.